around you, you got all these shouting, they're also like, mm. Mm. <laughs> they're waiting for that one point for your iman to drop and they're gonna jump inside of you. It sounds funny, but wallah, it's true. Again, you speak to the people. Do rock out on them. Brother, why are you? What's, what's, tell me about your life. Do you listen to music? Yeah, bro, I do. Yeah, I, I do. I listen to music. Are well, you really? Okay. And then no wonder why you're in the situation that you're in. So, brothers and sisters, music, stay away from it. Brothers and sisters, the final major sin that I want to discuss here, and this is the reason why the sister got possessed, is the issue of zina. Not that she did commit the zina, but when it comes to zina, Allah said, don't go near it. Near it. Not, not the actual. But there's, Allah is trying to tell us here that there's footsteps towards zina. There's things that lead you to the zina that are also haram for you. The zina in itself is not just what's haram. Allah is not telling you stay away from zina. Anything that leads to the zina, Allah said, even that is haram. For example, looking. That's why Allah said, don't look. Surah to nur Allah said, lower your gaze. Then right after Allah said, lower your gaze, He said, protect your private parts. Why Allah is telling you there's a direct connection between your looking and your private parts fall into zina. Because a person never did zina except that they looked at something. But it's many, 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 many roads. There's many stages towards falling into zina. And before I tell you the point that I want to get to, the base of Qasid, I want to mention to you some of the punishments of the people of zina. Well, like in Surah Al-Hajjah, Ayah number 44, Allah talks about the gates of Jahannam, seven. On this ayah, Ata ibn Abi, Ata ibn Abi Rabah, rahimahullah, who was the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was the student of the Prophet and the Prophet made dua for him to teach him the Quran. The, student, the Prophet said, student, student, told us on this ayah that from the worst gates of Jahannam, there's seven, right? He said, from the worst and the one that's the most severest in depression and most severest in terms of torment and most severest in terms of its stench is the gate where the people of the sinner are told to go into. That section of Jahannam is the worst, he's saying. The people of zina, filthy. Because a person who can go and do zina with a woman, he can, a woman and a man can let their private parts meet. And wallahi, they would never let their parents see that. But they show that to Allah. They show that to Allah. They can show Allah that, then they can do theft. Stealing is easy for them. Murder is easy for them. Would you rather your mum see you murder? Would you rather your mum see you steal or do zina? They're all wrong. And murder is worse than zina. It is. But I'm talking to you about the human psychology right now. Would you rather your mum see you fornicate or do a theft or do backbiting? You would rather your mum see you steal, would you not? Would you not? Subhanallah. So if you can do zina in front of Allah, which is the worst thing to show up someone, then you can show Allah through stealing. You can show Allah theft. You can show him backbiting and every other major sin. So zina is a big thing, brothers and sisters. Be conscious of it. Why it's dangerous. But how does possession and everything and the sister come into this? Because brothers and sisters, I told you there are steps towards zina. A man, you know, pornography is there. It's all under the same category. Masturbation is all under the same heading. It falls under these steps. But what is the basic step that if you fall into this one thing, you've fallen into the steps towards zina? It is to lose your modesty. It is to lose your haya. To lose your shyness. Allah told us in Surah Al-A'raf that shaitan, when he came and he whispered to our father Adam and his wife, our mother, Hawa Salamun Alayha, what was his objective? Surah Al-A'raf, read it. Allah tells us what his objective was. His objective, brothers and sisters, he said it was so I can cause what was covered of their private parts to become uncovered. He knew if they disobey Allah, they're going to be taken out of paradise. In paradise, are you wearing the clothes of Jannah? Yes, you are. Can you wear the clothes of Jannah outside of Jannah? No. So they would have to take their clothes off, they would become naked. They would become naked. Shaitan didn't say, I want them to be humiliated necessarily, even though he did, that was what he wanted. He didn't say, I want them to be sent to the hellfire. He said, my immediate objective is I want, them to, I want them to show their body. I want them to lose their modesty. I want them to lose their shyness, show their private parts. Now, as soon as Allah removed their clothes, Adam, he went and he tried to cover himself, alayhi salam, because he had shyness. But the point that I'm making to you, brothers and sisters, is look, look. And Allah tells us later, don't let shaitan fool you, deceive you rather, deceive you, like he did to your parents when he caused, what was, he caused their clothes to be taken from them. Well, I look at everyone today. Prophet says, look at them. 
Allah, look at the, the way the bodies are showing. Allah, you got sisters. Allah, it hurts, man. Sisters walking on hijab and their clothes are so tight that Wallahi, they might as well be naked. Wallahi, you know, everything is shown. And the men that are watching you, do you know what they're doing to you in their heads? Wallahi, they're already having sex with you in their head. Wallahi, if you could go inside a man's mind, men that you don't even realize as you're walking casually at the train station bus stop, they see you. If you could go inside the mind of a man for a second, you would be horrified. And they've already, they've already violated you in their brain. Every day a man's violating you in his mind. You're dressing like that. Let alone the ones who are not wearing hijab. My sisters, cover yourself. Brothers, I have a whole video on the issue of modesty. I don't want to go into this topic too much right now, but watch it. The link is here, inshallah. Brother Oyan who's sitting there is going to put it up here. He doesn't forget, inshallah ta'ala. Watch the video. Go. So you can learn about the issue of modesty. But know that modesty is the first step of shaitan. By the sister uploading her pictures on Facebook, she's showing people her face. She's showing people her beauty. She's showing people that gift that Allah gave to her, which is supposed to be precious. She's putting it online for everyone to see. And how many sisters do I see on Instagram with their pictures? And Facebook. Well, I sisters, take your pictures off. Please, guard yourself. It's not only the men you have to protect yourself from. The shayateen can fall in love with you. Wallahi, wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi, wa uqsulu bi rabbil ka'ba. Brothers and sisters, I know a brother, personally, who used to have a girlfriend. This is in Jahiliya, and I knew the girl as well. He used to tell me, bro, she, she, do you know what happens to her at home at night? The girl, she gets touched up. She was suffering from black magic and possession, and a shaitan that was in love with her used to touch her up. He used to fond with her in her private parts, brothers and sisters. It's disgusting for me to say this to you, but it used to happen to her. Sometimes you have sisters that wake up in the morning and they find discharge between their legs that comes through intimacy because they're being violated by a devil in their sleep and they don't realize it. Brothers and sisters, it's that deep, Wallahi. Protect yourself. Ibn Qayyim used to say, they say, they say rather, they say prevention is better than cure. Rather, Ibn Qayyim said prevention is the cure. It is the cure. Brothers and sisters, don't let yourself fall into a situation where it comes your way. This religion is about closing the doors to harm. So please, brothers and sisters, close these doors. Now, there are many other... Now, I've just discussed a few major sins. And also, I, I forgot to mention, for music, delete your music as well, brothers and sisters. Please, delete it. Delete, act straight away. You, if you've got some weed in your house, man, like, burn it. Like, throw it away. Don't, don't, don't burn it, actually. Don't burn the weed stuff. Or like, don't, like, throw it in the bin. Do something to it. Get rid of it. Alcohol, pour it out when I don't go again. Advise your friends, please show, show them these videos. Well, I, I didn't even talk to you about the bid'ah that shaitan wants to, uh, you to fall into and the kufr and the shirk that shaitan wants you to fall into. Brothers and sisters, you have to learn your religion. What I will leave you with is this. What I will leave you with is this. How to protect yourself from shaitan and all of these things. I told you shaitan tells us himself what he's going to do to us. He says that I'm going to misguide all of them, Ya Allah. He says, but Allah... The only ones who I will not be able to touch, the only ones I will not be able to harm from your slaves are the ones who are mukhlisin, the ones who have sincerity and purity in terms of their intention. Meaning that whenever they pray, Ya Allah, they pray for you. Whenever they wake up, Ya Allah, they wake up for you. Whenever they cry, they cry for you. Ya Allah, whenever they talk, they talk for you. Whenever they give da'wah, they do it for you. When they give charity, they do it for you. Ya Allah, when they wake up in the morning, when they sleep, they do it for you. Ya Allah, even when they go to the toilet, they come out, they thank you. When they eat, they eat for you, Ya Allah. Everything they do in their life, Ya Allah, it revolves around you. And where does intentions lie? In the heart. I told you, shaitan wants to get to your heart, right? Well, why if you come with ikhlas? Sincerity in your heart, sincerity for Allah, that you live for His sake, you die for His sake, you worship for His sake, you live, you breathe everything for Allah's sake. Shaitan can't touch you. Shaitan told you himself, he said, Ya Allah, but those guys, I'm not going to come near them. I can't, Ya Allah, it's impossible for me. He told us himself. Brothers and sisters, how do you learn intention? You learn Tawheed. Tawheed is the oneness of Allah. The way you learn sincerity, the way you purify your intention is through learning Tawheed. That Allah is the only one worthy to be worshipped in truth. But the reality is, brothers and sisters, that me and you don't even know why Allah is worthy to be worshipped in truth. How He's worthy to be worshipped in truth. For example, if I ask you, what's the difference between you and Shaitan? 
You and Iblis. Do you believe in Allah? Yes, you do, right? Do you believe Allah is one? Yes, you do. Does Shaitan believe in Allah? Yes, Shaitan believes Allah is one. He does, he does, he does indeed. Shaitan said, Ya Allah, you, Rabbi, bima aghwaiti, you're my Lord. He said, Inni akhaf Allah. He says, I fear you, you Allah. Brother Allah says, he, Yeah, he says, I fear Allah. Allah tells Shaitan, makes dua to Allah. Qala and then ila yawm yubaathun, Ya Allah, let me live to the day of judgment. And the Prophet said, Ad dua hu al-ibadah, dua is worship. Shaitan worships Allah. He said, Khalaqta, Ya Allah, you created me from what fire? He says, Ya Allah, you're my creator. Shaitan believes in Allah. What's the difference between us and Shaitan? If we don't even know that, how can we ever have Tawheed? How can our hearts ever be sincere for Allah's sake? How can we ever have our heart protected? If we don't know the difference between us and Shaitan, we don't know the difference between us and our enemy. As far as you're, he believes in Allah like you, he fears Allah like you, he believes in the day of judgment like you. What's the difference? If you don't know that difference, your brothers and sisters, if you don't know that difference, and what's the difference between you and shaitan? You see, Allah, these are things that are so important and necessary to learn. And that's why I'm going to invite you, please, at the end of this video, to go to muslimsurvivalguide.com. That is a website and a program that we, my, our team has put together solely for the purpose of educating you guys how to survive in terms of your religion. The very basic things that you and I need to know. How to be a Muslim at the very minimum. What Islam is. We don't know these things. We don't, if you don't know the difference between you and shaitan, then how do we even know that we're Muslims? He's definitely a kafir. Allah said, so, so far, everything that you believe, he believes as well. What's the difference? How do we know that you're not even from his people? Do you see where I'm coming from? It's important. How to protect yourself from him is to know this stuff. And we don't know it. So please go to muslimsurvivalguide.com. Sign up to the program and you will learn this. I will give you the answer in brief, but you won't understand it till you study it. The reason, the difference between us and shaitan is that shaitan refused worship for Allah. And we don't we affirm it for him alone. For you to really know what that means, you need to go to the program. Go watch the video, see, and whatever happens, inshallah ta'ala. Anyways, I leave you there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah bless you. Share the video. Like the video. And please subscribe. Please make sure brothers and sisters get to hear this video, man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.